Hey there fellow soil enthusiasts, welcome back to the Hydrohaven channel. Today, we're diving deep into something that could be silently killing your garden dreams right under your feet. Diseased soil is the hidden culprit behind countless gardening failures and sadly most gardeners never recognize the warning signs until their plants are already suffering. But not you, not after today. I'm going to walk you through the five unmistakable signs your soil is in serious trouble and share my time-tested methods for bringing it back from the brink. Let's save your soil together. Think of your soil as the foundation of your home. When that foundation cracks, everything built upon it eventually fails. Your soil isn't just dirt, it's a complex living ecosystem containing billions of organisms, minerals, organic matter, and water. When disease strikes this ecosystem, the entire balance is thrown off, and your plants pay the ultimate price. But unlike plants that visibly wilt and show distress, soil gives subtler signals that something's wrong. Learning to read these signals can be the difference between a thriving garden and years of frustration. The first major red flag of diseased soil is persistent water problems, either too much or too little. Healthy soil has an ideal structure that allows water to penetrate deeply while still draining excess moisture. When you water healthy soil, it should absorb moisture evenly, with water disappearing from the surface within a minute or two, but leaving the soil damp several inches down. In diseased soil, you'll notice water either pools on the surface for extended periods, or runs right through without being absorbed. If you water your garden and come back 30 minutes later to find puddles still sitting on top, your soil structure has been compromised. Conversely, if you water thoroughly but dig down an inch later and find bone-dry soil, something is seriously wrong with your soil's ability to retain moisture. The science behind this is fascinating. Healthy soil contains aggregates, clumps of soil particles bound together by fungal networks, bacterial glues, and organic matter. These aggregates create pathways for water and air movement while holding moisture like millions of tiny sponges. When soil disease strikes, these aggregates break down, leading to either compaction, causing pooling, or excessive looseness, causing rapid drainage. Either way, your plants are experiencing water stress despite your best efforts. The second sign your soil is crying for help is persistent surface crusting. After rain or irrigation, does your soil form a hard, crusty layer that seems almost impenetrable? This isn't normal. It's a classic symptom of soil disease. Healthy soil maintains its structure even after getting wet and drying out again. Diseased soil collapses and forms a cement-like barrier that prevents seedlings from emerging, blocks oxygen exchange, and hampers water penetration. To test for this, Gently poke your finger into your soil after it's been through a wet-dry cycle. In healthy soil, your finger should sink in with minimal resistance. If you have to use significant pressure, or if the surface feels like breaking through a shell, you're witnessing soil structure collapse, a telltale sign of microbial imbalance and organic matter depletion. This crusting occurs because the binding agents that hold soil particles in stable aggregates have been depleted. Without beneficial fungi and bacteria producing natural glues, and without adequate organic matter, soil particles collapse together when wet, and then harden as they dry. It's similar to what happens when you mix flour and water, initially fluid, it dries into a hard crust. This condition severely limits plant root growth and access to nutrients. The third sign requires getting your hands dirty. Grab a shovel and dig up a spadeful of soil from your garden. Spread it out on a light-colored surface and look closely. In healthy soil you should see an abundance of life earthworms, beetles, centipedes, and numerous smaller organisms visible to the naked eye. If your soil sample seems devoid of these creatures, your underground ecosystem is in trouble. Earthworms are particularly important indicators. These remarkable creatures are like soil health meters. They simply won't live in diseased or toxic soil environments. Their absence speaks volumes. Healthy garden soil typically contains 10 to 15 earthworms per cubic foot. Significantly fewer suggests a serious soil health issue. Beyond the visible creatures, healthy soil contains billions of microscopic organisms that break down organic matter, fight pathogens, and make nutrients available to plants. When toxic conditions, lack of organic matter, or chemical imbalances occur, these populations crash. While you can't see the microbes directly, their larger counterparts, the worms and insects, serve as visible proxies for the overall biological health of your soil. Healthy soil has a rich, appealing, earthy scent, that wonderful smell after rain that scientists call petrichor. This aroma comes from geosmin, a compound produced by beneficial soil bacteria. 
Diseased soil, by contrast, often smells sour, stagnant, or like rotten eggs. Sometimes it has almost no smell at all. Your nose knows, if your soil doesn't smell pleasant, something's wrong with the microbial community. Color tells an equally important story. Healthy topsoil typically ranges from dark brown to black, indicating abundant organic matter and humus. Diseased soil often appears pale, grayish, or has an unusual uniform color throughout. Mottled colors with gray or rust-colored spots often indicate poor drainage and oxygen depletion, conditions where beneficial organisms can't thrive and pathogens take over. The combination of off smells and unusual coloration provides powerful evidence of soil disease. These characteristics directly reflect the biological activity or lack thereof in your garden soil. They're warning signs that the complex web of life supporting your plants is unraveling. The fifth and perhaps most troubling sign of diseased soil is the migration of plant problems across your garden over time. When the same symptoms, stunted growth, yellowing leaves, wilting root rot, begin appearing in different plants in different areas of your garden regardless of what you plant there, you're dealing with a soil-borne issue. Pay special attention if areas that once grew healthy plants gradually decline in productivity despite crop rotation and proper care. This often indicates soil pathogens or nutrient imbalances building up in your soil. Fusarium wilt, verticillium wilt, and various root rots can persist in soil for years, creating dead zones where plants consistently struggle. This pattern of spreading plant problems is particularly alarming because it suggests active soil disease rather than simple nutrient deficiency. The pathogens responsible can travel through water, on garden tools, and even on footwear, slowly colonizing more of your garden. Without intervention, these problems rarely resolve themselves and typically worsen with each growing season. Now that you can identify the problem, let's focus on solutions. Healing diseased soil is possible though it requires patience and a systematic approach. The good news is that soil has remarkable regenerative capacity when given the right conditions. The first step is diagnostic confirmation. Consider getting a comprehensive soil test that includes biological activity measures, not just nutrient levels. Many university extension offices and specialized soil labs now offer expanded testing that examines microbial diversity and pathogen presence. This baseline information helps target your remediation efforts precisely. Once you've confirmed soil disease, begin the healing process with organic matter, the ultimate soil medicine. Compost is particularly effective introducing beneficial microorganisms while improving soil structure. Apply a 2 to 3 inch layer of high quality compost and gently incorporate it into the top few inches of soil. In severely diseased soils, repeated smaller applications over time work better than one massive dose. Biochar represents another powerful healing tool, particularly for soils suffering from pathogen overload or toxic conditions. This specialized charcoal-like material creates a favorable habitat for beneficial microorganisms while binding toxins. When charged with compost tea before application, biochar becomes an instant apartment complex for beneficial soil microbes, accelerating the recovery process. Cover cropping with disease-suppressive plants offers a natural way to fight soil pathogens. Certain plants, including many mustard family members, marigolds, and Sudan grass release compounds toxic to soil-borne pathogens when they decompose. Growing these plants as a cover crop and then incorporating them into your soil provides targeted biological control without chemicals. Microbial inoculation speeds recovery dramatically. Products containing mycorrhizal fungi, trichoderma, bacillus subtilis, and other beneficial organisms can re-establish healthy microbial communities. These beneficial microbes compete with pathogens for resources while creating soil-building compounds. Think of them as probiotics for your soil. For soils with severe structural problems, consider mineral amendments. Green sand, volcanic minerals, and certain clay formulations can help rebuild the soil's physical structure while providing trace minerals. These materials work synergistically with biological approaches, creating the physical framework for healthy aggregation. Patience is essential in this healing process. Severely diseased soil typically requires a full year of active restoration before returning to optimal health. During this recovery period, focus on growing resilient soil-improving plants rather than sensitive crops. Legumes, dynamic accumulators, and hardy native plants make excellent transition crops as they contribute to soil healing while tolerating challenging conditions. 
By recognizing the warning signs of soil disease and implementing these healing strategies, you're not just fixing a problem, you're transforming your garden's foundation. Healed soil grows incredibly productive, disease-resistant plants with minimal external inputs. It's the difference between constantly fighting garden problems and working with nature's abundance. Remember that soil health isn't a destination but a journey. Even after healing your soil, continue supporting its biology with regular organic matter additions, minimal disturbance and diverse plantings. Healthy soil is resilient but requires ongoing care to maintain its vibrant ecosystem. If this guide has helped you understand your soil better, please hit the subscribe button and share this video with other gardeners who might be struggling with mysterious plant problems. Drop a comment below sharing your own soil healing journey. Your experience could be exactly what another gardener needs to hear. Until next time, this is Hydrohaven, helping you build gardens from the ground up, literally. Keep those hands dirty, friends.